Bonjour à tous. J'espère que vous m'entendez bien au fond de la salle. Merci Aéro Montréal. Merci Suzanne pour me donner cette tribune euh, qui va nous permettre de, de partager quelques visions, quelques pensées ensemble. Mais, mais plus, plus important, alors, quel bonheur de vous revoir en, en la réalité après deux ans de, de pandémie. J'ai revu des anciennes amies et des connaissances. Je tiens à vous dire, c'est un grand plaisir pour moi de, de vous revoir et puis de repartager des moments comme ça aujourd'hui. Avant de commencer, je veux enlever toutes les notions de rumeurs. C'est une canette d'eau ici, ce n'est pas une canette de bière. Right. Euh, oops. All right. Now that we're getting, uh, you know, let me start by just saying a few words about who we are at CA. You know, I just got a few couple of slides that's going to anchor the company. You saw the corporate video. It's great. It's very inspirational there. There's one thing you got to remember. It's our mission. Our mission is to lead at the frontier of digital immersion for those moments that matter. It's quite simple. Whether you're a pilot, you know, performing a takeoff, and you get an engine failure just at the most critical moments. Whether you're a soldier and you dispatch into one of those critical missions where the stakes are high and the environment is quite busy, whether you're a doctor and you're performing a, you know, one of those complicated procedures on a case you've never seen before, these are the moments that matter and that's what we do. We help people perform in those conditions. When you look at the company, we, we are operating in three markets, civil aviation, defense and security, and healthcare. You know, we became a world leader, definitely at a global scale. We went from customers not knowing we were doing training to customers you know, becoming the leader in training aviation and delivering over a million training hours of flight training a year. When, they, when the, 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 the finance people or the, the, the accountants look at the company, this is the image they see. You know, a company with 13,000 employees, $3.4 billion revenue Canadian per year, located in 200 sites around the world. You know, when, when technology guys like me look at the company, you know, this year we're celebrating our fifth, 75th anniversary, this is what I see, the technology journey of the company which started by the definition of the training standard for civil aviation training, the flight simulator. A standard which has become a benchmark and is still the benchmark of the industry today, many years later. We took that benchmark and we moved it to a high volume production product, you know, leveraging the commercial off the shelf supply chain of the global world to make sure that training product was able to, you know, progress into the world and be accessible to as many people as possible. We, we pivoted the company later on from a technology focus, from a product focus, to a training focus. So that the minds of the people like me were sharply focused instead of developing the best simulator, the most complicated technology, to delivering the best training services. So we start to think in terms of training service delivery. How can we access the people and deliver the best training experience possible? You know. and, and when we do, did that pivot, we did a big embrace of the digital technologies. The digital technologies, not only to touch the customer, you know, moving away from the phone line connection point to the web connection and online, uh, to, from the customer point of view, to internet the thing on the device to make sure that the training device uptime and maintainability cost of operation was optimized. And finally, the digital technology deployed right into the heart of the training journey to remove any of the subjectivity into the training delivery. When you're trying to assess a pilot, how well he did, you know, traditionally it used to be a subjective evaluation, with, with, but with the new te digital technology, we've brought data objective evaluation into that process. You know, we also went to the adoption of augmented reality and mixed reality virtual reality solution and introduced many industry first solutions and won awards of excellence for those solutions. And today, we're clearly turning towards large scale synthetic environment, digital twin environments. And I'll be coming back later into the presentation, but when I look at the company as a technology guy, this is what I see. Now, enough about CAE, and let's talk about why I'm here today. 
Suzanne and her team has asked me to share with you a few visions, a few thoughts. What do we see? What's happening in the future for the aerospace industry? I'm not pretending to predict the future, but I tell you, a large part of my job is that. You know, I have a team of specialists, and we're looking at the trends into the world, not only in technology, but also societal, geopolitical uh, consumption. And we're trying to predict, okay, where the world is going. And most importantly, we're trying to set the roadmap of the company, uh, the company to emerge in a better place. Not behind the trend, not lagging, but right at the right moment with the right offering for a customer. You know, I can assure you, none of us predicted the COVID. You know, uh, we just went through a very rough time of two years as aerospace. But the agility in this process has surely enabled us to emerge in a stronger position today as the air travel is recovering than when we, when we were before the pandemic. Today, I'll be sharing with you some insights on three of the major trends that I see. And it should not be a surprise, you know, the first one is the emergence of eVTOLs, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle. I think I've seen five presentations in this forum today just about that. I'll give you my perspective and I'll give you my perspective of what we're doing as well about it. The second is the high visibility of the carbon footprint of the aerospace industry. And again, not a surprise for you, I, I saw some presentation material that was shared on that very precise subject. And the last one, I don't think I've seen anything in this form about it, but it's the metaverse. Uh, it's definitely more than a buzzword in the digital industry, and we need to keep our eyes open because it's coming our way, all right? Not only I'll be sharing insights on those trends, what do we see, but also I'll be sharing what are we doing at CA on those. The first major trend, the EV toll, we're definitely opening a new chapter in the history book of aviation. You know. How did it start? What are they? Where did they come from exactly? You know, I, when you look back at the last decade, you know, one of the big market disruptors in urban transportation has been the Uber experience. Your ability to, from any street corner, call for a transportation ride in a very transparent digital experience, you know, and going, you know, to that, that experience smoothly in a very pleasant way. You know, when it started, it was a revolution, but today it's a mainstream. We take it for granted. You know, if you wind back a few years ago, some people started to dream and say, why don't we take the experience another notch further, like Emil we used to say, you know. And why don't we start to fly a customer above the traffic? And I, I believe this is, was the inception. Now, if you look at the history of aviation, you know, the first vertical flight with a man on board happened close to a century ago. You know, if, if I were to show you all the achievements of the aerospace industry since, you know, we would be here all afternoon. But instead, let me show you what's happening today, you know. This chart was published by the Vertical Flight Society. I think I met a couple of the guys, uh, you know. Today, 600 vehicles, EVTOLs, are under development. And this chart was published in January. You know, this is amazing. We are opening a new book there from zero vehicle to 600 in just about five years. This is, this is exciting time for the aerospace industry. What are the driving factors pushing this behind, you know? You know I, I, and this is my personal opinion. I think there's a need for a new mode of, trans, mode of transportation in the dense urban environment, you know? Second, you probably heard about the, the phenomenon of the last mile to be crossed in a, in a multimodal transportation journey where you start in public transportation, heavy rail, you end up on a bus, and finally the last mile towards your house, you know, the, the phenomenon of the last mile. And third, the promises of electrical propulsion, you know, in aviation with new battery technologies. We've heard our friends, uh, André, you know, the legend, this morning of H55 talk about uh, batteries. You know, I, I will show you from a different, you know, angle what it means for us. At CAE, you know, we've produced and trained more pilots than any other company in the world. I, I think we're pretty good at forecasting pilot demand for the future based on what we see today. Just for conventional airline, more than a quarter, million new, a quarter of a million new pilots will be needed going forward. You know, 
uh, the young people that you see on these charts, you know, full of enthusiasm, will go through the heavy training process and will emerge into the training, uh, into the aviation system later on. This is exactly where the EVTOL trend is disrupting the picture. You know, we, we forecast there's going to be a need for an additional 60,000 pilots to fly the EVTOLs. The vast majority of the EVTOLs under development today are flown by a pilot, a new type of pilot, a pilot whose skills straddle across the skills of fixed wing aviation and the skill of rotary wing aviation. Yeah. And for that new pilot profile, a new training curriculum will be needed and a new training device bespoke for that application will need to be developed. You know. Some of you have probably noticed, you know, there's a CAE logo on the bottom of the vehicle. Before any rumors start, let me, let me clarify. We're not on the process of developing a metal or composite vehicle at this present time. However, I can tell you, we have developed a digital twin of a vehicle. You know, a fully simulated digital twin of an eVTOL, a CAE-made eVTOL. We've done that twin, not only to power the training device of the future, but also to to power the engineering test rigs of the OEMs, which are knocking at our door and say, we need simulation capability for the, our development process, for our certification journey. We need certification capability to drive our test rigs because we got complicated fly-by-wire architecture that can only be tested using simulation environment. Yeah. I will come back to the inVTOL engagement a bit later in the presentation. The second major trend, the carbon footprint of the industry, you know, not a surprise to anybody, a deep trend that started before the pandemic and has grown stronger ever since. You probably saw yesterday, you know, this is the good news, you know, the, the call to action, that fly the fly, the net zero commitment by the major stakeholder of the industry that was done in Boston last year, refreshing, you know. Now, you know, this is how it translates. Some of you are going to say 2050, that's pretty far down the line. The others who are closer to the magnitude of the challenge, the magnitude of the leap we need to take together, are going to say 2050, that is tomorrow. We need to start right away. Indeed, large-scale synthetic aviation fuel supply chain, you know, starting from renewable sources right up to the delivery on the airport at the aircraft, will have to be created from, from the ground up, literally. And second, new more efficient aircraft configuration, new high precision aircraft operation, air traffic system, will, yielding higher efficiencies, will have to be invented and deployed. I'll be talking about precision uh, aircraft operation later. This is uh, another good news, you know, this uh, a view coming from a parallel industry, the automotive industry. Our friends, they're investing significant amount of dollars into the development of technology, battery technology, and the supply chain to create those batteries. You can clearly see the acceleration from the bottom orange, cave, uh, orange forecast curve at the bottom, which was a 2018 forecast, to the two top curves, the, the red and the blue, which are more recent, 2021, you know, an increase of four folds in terms of production throughput capability. Serious money being poured into battery technology by our friends in the automotive. Now, this is how it translates to anybody in aerospace who is interested in electrifying a vehicle. Battery energy density, three folds increase to above 300 watts hour per kilogram. Battery cost dropping by a factor of 10 folds to close to $100 per kilowatt per hour. Yeah. Remember those metrics, because with those metrics, we are now in the zone where electrical propulsion in aerospace is a reality and definitely possible. The last, uh, the, the third of the, the big trends, the metaverse, the next revolution. You know. What is it? You know, yeah. Just about a year ago, a lot of you probably heard Mark Zuckerberg rebranded his company from Facebook, which was a name which was known around the world, to Meta. 
At the time, a lot of the observer in the industry were wondering, is this a trick to take the focus away from all the issues Facebook was going through at the time? I can assure you that no. You know, when you listen closely to the narrative, there was a deliberate strategic move to develop a new product, a new capability, and to make that new capability the major core trust of the company going forward. Soon after that announcement, the other tech giants, NVIDIA, Microsoft, came out very public with their own metaverse announcement. What is it exactly? What is the metaverse? A lot of the industry observers are saying, okay, this is, we're at the tipping point towards Web 3.0. I'm sure you're a bit puzzled at this time. You're wondering what I'm talking to, what am I talking about and why am I talking about the metaverse? You know, and how is it linked to aerospace? Nevertheless, if you're interested to go deeper into this, there's a couple of good TED Talk on YouTube, one by Herman Narula, the CEO of Improbable, one by Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, and there's also an excellent book by a guy called Matthew Ball, who lives in Toronto. Now, just to, to, to make things simple, when I look at the metaverse, to me, you know, this is how I look at the trend. Who are the actors investing in, and where do they position themselves? And you start to get the position when you line up the players along the technology stack of the metaverse. At the bottom, you know, you get the telco, the transportation people, the network people, and the chip making people are gearing up for unprecedented level of traffic and an unprecedented level of processing. Just above, where the biggest space is, you, you know, you get the vir virtualization engine. The gaming giants, Unreal, Epic, uh, Nvidia, Unity, you know, these are the guys who are going to provide the toolkit to make the metaverse come to life. Above you'll have the, the human interface people, you know, the, the new goggles people, the augmented reality, the virtual reality headset, the new media to interface in a different way there. And above, this is where the clarity comes. You get the use case, all that technology stack to achieve what new use case. Okay, so you get the collaborative space, the gaming space, the financial people are emerging into this play. You know, you know we're really experiencing use case of this. You know, you, you probably heard about large game being played by thousands of people all together, the Minecraft with 10,000 players there. This is happening now. The next step, which is just around the corner, is large, large scale event, okay? So imagine you're experiencing a sport event. You go to a Canadian game, but you're not in the game. You're in at your home there, but you're connected to the game, into that virtual space. You're sitting in the same, speed, the same seat as you would be in the stadium and you're watching the game from that point of view. And you're surrounded by cheering crowds and you're even interacting with that crowd. And you're ordering food and beverages in that virtual space there. You're doing all that experience and you're in your home connected to this and experiencing this new way there, this new real way. At some point, even Uber Eats will deliver your beverage to your home that you've ordered into, your, uh, into the virtual space. Once you master those challenges, the new use case experience, the collaborative, are going to start to pile on. You know, we're about to see that tipping point there. Those were the three big trends I was uh, planning to share with you this afternoon. Let me, let me show you what we're doing at CA to leverage those three there. You know, we got a common perspective on the, the world. Now, on the EV toll, at just two months ago at the Farnborough Air Show, CA has released a new training product for the EV toll market. It's called the 700 MXR training product. You know, it, it was publicly launched and it features a number of industry first. Okay, just to name a few, it's got a cloud computing backbone. It is managed like a computer edge device. You know, it's got the right architecture to be managed from the cloud and be treated like an edge. It's got, of course, the, the mixed reality headset instead of the big visual dome as the, of the device of yesterday. The visual software stack is a gaming. It's based on the Unreal 5 next generation. It's got industry leading large urban environment which are rich and extremely dense, you know. It's got micro weather phenomenon as what you would find into a city, like flying into the air wake behind a high rise building. You know. And it's got a high density, 
air traffic challenges. This training device is as transformative as the eVTOL themselves to the training market. Now, when it comes down to eVTOL, you know, we've been into that space for two, three years. This partnership with some of the leading, I see John Martin is here, Beta is here, Joby, I think, is here, have been publicly announced. We're working with the OEMs you know, to provide services along the continuum of the journey from very early when the OEMs need to develop the vehicle and need simulation devices, need simulation environment, needs test rigs which are smart and have a simulation component right into the middle of the, the, the engagement where we provide training device, training services for both for pilot and mechanics. And eventually when the real eVTOL will enter service, we'll need a dedicated, specialized air traffic management solution and flight planning solution. We are into that continuum. And today we're engaged with those eVTOLs which have been OEM, which have been publicly announced. On the carbon footprint, you know, in 2020, CA has taken a carbon neutrality commitment, making CA one of the first company to become carbon neutral and to go as far as this. You know, it was publicly done by the CEO in front of the employees and also in front of the children of the employees. So it resonated very strongly. Uh, at the same time, behind the scene, the CEO came to a small group of us and he told us, okay, uh, I want to develop an electrical aircraft uh, for CA. Why an electric aircraft? Why CA? Few people know that CA operates a large fleet of piston-powered training aircraft as part of our training services. You know, between defense and civil, we all operate over 200 piston aircraft. Yeah. We teach people how to fly on those, air on those aircraft and that real flight is part of their training journey very early into the uh, training journey. So, why CA, you know? CA leads the complete training curriculum of flight training. You know, we own the complete chain from the very onset where there's a training curriculum that we transform into lessons plan, that we transform into flight plan, and finally, we operate the aircraft in our operating centers and we maintain the aircraft. So the, picture the complete chain from the need right up to the delivery with the pilots flying, essentially. We just happen to know a few things about aircrafts are made as well. So when you combine those things, those capability, it puts CA in the right sweet spot to lead that transformation. Because I was talking to another guy this morning, says, the majority, the, the biggest part of the conversion of the challenge is in the operation. Converting the aircraft is a challenge on its own, but the bigger challenge is operating in a meaningful way in electric aircraft, which will not be the equivalent of a piston gas-powered aircraft. Along that project, publicly, again at Farnborough, we've announced Project Clean, a partnership with the key partner, H55, Piper, Safran, and Garmin have been formed. You know, we've built those leaders in their field. They're part of our team with their capability, and they share the same agenda to drive forward towards the conversion of aviation towards electrical propulsion. Piper is the OEM of the iconic Piper Archer aircraft, an aircraft which has been in flying longer than I've been alive, and is still the benchmark in the training industry today. Safran, of course, major league OEM in the aerospace with a strategic trust to develop electrical technology, bring on board the Safran ingenious electrical motor. H55, the guy who crossed the world in a solar flyer, and you heard André in his speech this morning, inspiration, vision, and technology and battery with a know-how and real flight experience. And Garmin, the new generation cockpit people, essentially. The, the, the modern guy in general aviation. I am pleased to announce again, and it was done in Farnborough, CA is committing to develop a supplement type certificate on the Piper Archer to convert it from half gas powered engines to electrical propulsion. CA is committed, committed to modify a third of its operating fleet, a third of its operating fleet to electrical propulsion 
And best of all, CA is committed to make that STC available commercially to third party to make sure that we're not alone and together we advance the journey towards net zero. I, I, this is the moment where I want to take a few moments more to, to, you know, to, to recognize a couple of our partners in Montreal. You know, we're in the aerospace valley. I want to personally thank a couple of the guys at Ellison, at Marinvin, at Manarino, and at the Saint Hubert CJEP on the South Shore, who've been with us from the beginning and have been instrumental. Your skills, your contributions are valued and recognized. Thank you. Finally, I spoke to you about three trends. The last one was the metaverse. You know, some people may be thinking or are thinking, CAE, aerospace, metaverse, really? You know, the slide you're looking at now is not just a cool picture of one of the trendy areas in Montreal, the, the Canal de Chine, some people are going to recognize. It's just around the corner behind us. It's one of the most trendy areas in Montreal. It, it, this is not just it. What you're looking at is a digital twin of the city, essentially. And in that digital twin, buildings are 3Ds, with entry, exits, internal space, road network of trafficability, with all the limitation of the Montreal challenges. Ground and vegetation have got carbon and water absorption properties. Today, these latest technology enable us to address new large-scale challenges the world is facing. And what are those challenges? You know, why do we have a twin like that? You know, challenges that I'm describing on this chart, you know, climate change, mobility, you know, when it comes to understand you know, and preparing for climate change, better intelligence, better outcome are key, not only to plan for the future, but also to execute better crisis management when the worst happens. When it comes to experience, new multimodal solution of transportation in a fluid way, you know, greater level of connectivity between all the stakeholders is required. In both of these cases, large connected digital twin environment do step up these capabilities. The magnitude of the technology challenge is huge into the metaverse and into digital twin. No company will be able to tackle it on its own. I'm pleased to show and recognize our partner, our technology partner in that journey. Unreal, the giant gaming company, which has got an incredible open collaborative approach when you do business with them. Black Shark AI in Austria, which is able to stream high precision satellite geospatial data, that, that data describes the earth or, 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 or the you know, topography of the earth, at the scale of the earth. ADN in Scotland, which enables us to scale these worlds to unprecedented level in the cloud computing continuum. And cesium who enables us to consume at the point of need that world, you know, being that point of need, being a large display like that, or your smartphone there. The picture you're looking on this page is showing very different world, you know. You got a military fighter pilot at the top, you got a London Trafalgar Square in an emergency management situation. And then you got a Joby EV tall in the San Diego region. Very, very different world, very different use case. The common link between all of them is the technology, the CA technology stack behind them, the metaverse stack, which enables us to solve those problems in the metaverse. In the same space and along the same strategy of digital twin, in February this year, CA has concluded the acquisition of Air Center from Sabre. The acquisition of Air Center has expanded CA's capability into the flight planning, real-time flight planning, and real-time flight management uh, for airlines. We are now providing software and digital technologies to airlines, helping them run their operation, essentially. Because of who we are, we're now crossing the data, we're crossing the boundary between the data ecosystem of the training world and the even larger data ecosystem of the operation world of airline. The two, you can picture two big data, data ecosystems now intersecting and opening new efficiency, new, new levels of coordination between those data sets to yield better precision in the operation and in the training of pilot. Certainly a step towards the net zero challenge. 
in that acquisition, we welcome a thousand new employees over 18 countries working on software solution, serving digital twin of the global air traffic system. Every day we serve 22,000 flights. We touch 200,000 pilots individually. To me, this is a perfect use case, a metaverse technology to solve a big challenge, the air transportation challenge. Closing, yeah. I hope I've been able to give you an insight or two on what's ahead of us. Whether the future will unfold exactly like that, I can't guarantee you. But what I'm sure is we're going to go through surprises, disruption, and innovation ahead of us. A lot of that disruption will come from blind spots we have in aerospace, some areas we don't look at normally. There will be opportunities for innovation driven by global social, by environmental, and by political factors. This is why I encourage you, when you look ahead, open up the aperture and look large you know, as you plan your roadmap. I am passionate, and as you probably guess, I'm amazed about the future of aerospace. I thank you so much for your time today.